Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Alfred Addis. This is the American Independence Hour for Thursday, August 13th, year of our Lord, 2009. Here it is, Thursday the 13th. I think it was Pogo. Some of you may remember the old Pogo cartoons. I think Pogo made a point how Thursday the 13th is almost as bad as Friday the 13th, or, or maybe, uh, I don't remember, but something along those lines. I can't remember exactly, but if Pogo was right, maybe this is not going to turn out to be such a great show. But Pogo is a cartoon character, and uh, who knows? Maybe it will turn out to be halfway decent. We're going to talk, of course, we'll start with a little bit of news and commentary. Before we're done, we're going to get into the concept of frivolous again, which is something I have been... They use, they dismiss cases for being frivolous, and I've got a news report here to bring that, bring that to our attention. And it appears that the government uses the concept of that which is of, of declaring something to be frivolous, the courts use it, as essentially just a catch-all, and if they don't like what you've got to say and you are grossly politically incorrect, then they'll just say, that's frivolous, your claim is frivolous, your defense is frivolous, we don't have to listen to you. Uh, I have been somewhat fixated and obsessed on the, I wouldn't say obsessed, intrigued, bewildered by the concept of frivolous, I'll bet you at least 10, 15 years. It remains something of a mystery to me, but we've but in the last, but today I've actually done a little research on it, and it's beginning to look a little more clear to me. I'm beginning to get the handle on it, and I'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that before the program is done. We may even talk a little more about RICO suits. I don't know if we'll get to RICO tonight or not, but we shall see. Here's what we'll start the. Here, here's one from, uh, oh, World Net Daily. Congressman wants government GPS in cars. An Oregon congressman says he wants to test having a government GPS unit in every car <laughs> so a tax could be imposed on the miles driven. The proposal, House Resolution 3311, which calls for a test project costing $150 million plus, was introduced by Representative Earl Blumenauer, Democrat of Oregon. I am not surprised that he's a Democrat. Of course, it wouldn't surprise me if he was a Republican either. They're all a pack of freaking morons. Here's what he says. Oregon has successfully tested a vehicle miles traveled fee, and it is time to expand and test the VMT program across the country. A VMT system can better assess fees based on use of our roads and bridges, as well as during times of peak congestion when a when a fee, than a fee based on fuel consumption. It is time to get creative and find smart ways to rebuild and renew America's deteriorating infrastructure. It goes on. The idea is they're going to put a GPS monitor in your car, and then it's going to be like driving a cab. The meter will be running, and you're going to be taxed on every mile or portion thereof that you put on. They'll have a satellite tracking your car. Of course, they're going to have to know where you, incidentally, they'll know where your car is at any given moment, but that's not as if they're getting into some surveillance things. No, they are doing this just to raise taxes for the infrastructure, baby. We got to, res we got to get creative, and we've got to get smart to support our infrastructure. We don't need to get smart enough to actually bring our jobs back by demand, by restoring tariff barriers, getting out of the global free trade and restoring industries to this country where we could actually make something. We don't have to get that smart. We don't have to get that creative. And we don't have to sit back and recognize that more than already we have taxes on gasoline right? and tires and batteries. But just take the tax on gasoline. Isn't that pretty much a tax on how many miles you drive? I understand some cars get better mileage and some get less and so on, but the heavier ones get less and so on. Oh, I find the heavier cars are probably, are in theory, putting more use, uh, more wear on the road than the lighter cars, but the heavier cars also use more gasoline. I mean, I listen to this stuff and it just cracks me up. I don't know what we need to do. I think probably... It's hard to know. We have congressmen, most of them don't even read the damn legislation they vote for or against. They don't write the legislation they vote for or against. All they do is broker legislation. That's what they really do. They just sit up there and they, 
They trade off. Some special interest comes in and says, baby, I will give you uh, $20,000 if you will promote this bill. Here, I've already written it. Don't bother to read it. Just promote it to us, the jerks in the cat house, and I'll give you uh, 20000 They say, no, 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 I'm a senator. You can't buy a senator, sir. I am shocked that you think you could buy a senator for $20,000. If you want to buy a senator, it's going to cost you at least fifty grand, Sonny. And you better be connected. And if you're not connected, it probably cost you hundred grand. So don't come in here making an offer for just twenty. But the point I'm trying to illustrate is that the treasonous whores in the cat house on the Potomac, otherwise known as politicians, congressmen, senators, and presidents, they don't actually legislate. All right. Now the president, of course, he's in the executive branch. He never legislates anyway, at least in theory. But the Congress, they don't write the laws. They don't even read the damn laws. So how are they doing this? This is a brokerage. They are handling laws like commodities. And people handle them like stocks. And people pay them to promote these laws there in the cat house. And in the final analysis, the laws are being paced, being, being passed based on how much money is being paid. One way or another, your congressman is being bribed, influenced, controlled. Somebody is who someone up there is getting paid to promote these damn laws. And nobody even reads them. Nobody pays attention to them. That, on one hand, is bad. Then you have jerks like this who apparently is actually, I'm sure someone supplied this to him. He's not doing his own thinking. He's just sitting back and saying, well, golly, we've got to think. We've got to do something here. I need to put my name on something to make it look like I was making a meaningful contribution. How about we do this? Well, I can ramble on and rant about this for a while more, and I don't need to, but it is just absurd. My God, they're trying to find a new, a smart and creative way to raise more taxes. Let me give you the next one. Here's the next. You know, it's absurd, but here's the next one. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Nope, maybe I, hang on just a second. Yeah, here it is. This is for yesterday, okay, the, the 12th. It says, Happy Cost of Government Day. Today, August 12th, is the Cost of Government Day, the day in the calendar year when the average American worker has earned enough gross income to pay off his or her share of the spending and regulatory burdens imposed by government on the federal, state, and local levels. <sighs> the Cost of Government Day falls 26 days later than last year's date. And it's 23 days later than the previous all-time high date of July 20th in, in, uh, in, in 1982. There are numerous reasons for this explosive growth of government spending, including TARP, the so-called stimulus, and the big three auto bailouts. If Congress and the President had not pushed for TARP, Americans would have celebrated the cost of government day on July 25th rather than August 12th. What's the point to this? The point is that if you were paying half your income on average to support the government, cost of government day would be on June 30th, at the end of the sixth month of the year. We are past July. We are into August. You understand? We are in the eighth month of the year. And what it implies is that the average man is paying close to two-thirds of his income to support the government right now. You are paying $2 out of every three that you earn to support the local, state, and federal government. And what are you getting for your dollar? Does anybody have an idea? I mean, my God, how long can this continue? And that jackass Clinton, he made the statement back about 1992, 92, 94 in there. He was quoted as saying he predicted the next generation of Americans would pay 80% of their income as taxes. I mean, you and I can be, I guess it's cause for celebration. We're only paying about 66% of our, of, uh, I don't know, 60, 65%, somewhere in there. We've got a ways to go before we get to 80%. Just think of it, the day is coming when thanks to jerks like this congressman out of Oregon who wants to come up with a new device to raise your taxes even more, you're going you're gonna to be able to keep $1 out of every five that you earn. How in God's name can the country support, can, can the country survive when ultimately 60% of its work product is essentially just government regulation? What we're talking about, one way or another, is that 60% of the